is welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easier to understand. Today we're tackling a problem involving ideal gas and ideal gas transformation. The thermodynamics and the problem statement reads, 7 kilograms of carbon dioxide is expanded in a constant pressure process, that is, an isobaric process. The initial temperature of the carbon dioxide is 400 Kelvin, and the initial volume of the carbon dioxide is 2.3 meters cubed. During the process, the CO2 expands to double its volume. We are to find the initial pressure of the CO2 in kilopascals, to find the final temperature of the CO2 in Kelvin, and to calculate the work done during the process in kilojoules, and finally to draw the process in a PV diagram. We are given the R, that is the ideal gas constant for CO2, and the reason why it, we know it's for CO2 is because, well, firstly, obviously it says so here, but also that this is given in kilograms instead of moles, which is per kilograms of CO2 molecule instead of per mole of CO2. So let's draw what we have here. Let's have a little, try to see it visually. Let's draw the two states. We have two states, so state one and state two. I'm going to draw a little box, a little container, in which our CO2 is, well, contained, I guess. Let me go ahead and copy this box, place it over here. And we have CO2 inside both. No mass is entering or leaving, at least nothing is said, so we can assume it's not. We know from one to the next, so from state one to state two, we know this is an isobaric process, right? So the pressure does not change. And we know that initially we have a V1, let's put down here, here, and here. Our V1 is 2.3 meters cubed, and our temperature is 400 Kelvin. Whereas in the next one, we know that our V equals twice, so the volume doubles, right? Double its initial volume. So we know the volume on this next section here is to be 4.6 meters cubed, double 2.3. And we also know the pressure on this guy here is P2 is the same as P1 because this is an isobaric process. So note that in both states we have two um, properties. Well, actually, I should rephrase that. On the first state, we have two independent properties, gas properties, and we can use that toward advantage to completely define state one. And once we do that, we're going to find eventually pressure P1, and when we do that, then we're going to have the pressure of state two, because it's the same as P1, right? And once we have the pressure in state two, then we're going to have two properties of state two, that is the specific volume, because we have the mass, and the pressure. Whereas in state one, we have the specific volume, because we have the volume and the mass, and the temperature. Okay? So we are all set to solve this problem. Get rid of this P here. So I'm going to start by defining completely state one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So part A, we're looking for both um, the pressure and the temperature on state one. So we know that for ideal gases, and we have CO2 as an ideal gas, PV equals MRT. Always rem remembering that this can be M for mass or N for moles, and what's going to determine that is our the unit of the R that we're using, right? And here we have, if we want to solve for pressure, it's going to be mass RT by volume. Know that we have every single thing in this equation, so we can go ahead and just place down the information that we know. We know it's 7 kilograms of CO2. We know R, we know was given, uh, 0.89 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. 189 kilojoules per kilograms Kelvin. Uh, then we have temperature, that's 400 Kelvin. And everything is divided by the volume, the volume divided by 2.3 meters cubed. Yeah, so look how this turns out nicely because Kelvin and Kelvin go away, kilograms and kilograms go away, and then we're left with kilojoules divided by meters cubed. And if you recall quickly, right, work, work is how we go from PV. So in other words, if we look at the units here, we're saying that joules is the same thing as meters cubed per pascals, right? So in other words, if we divide joules per meters cubed, we get pascals. Since we have kilojoules, we're going to get kilopascals, right? So we're going to remove these guys here, and we're going to be left with kilopascals. Brilliant. And what we get out of this math is that P1, should put P1 here, this is state 1, is about 230.0869. So let's go ahead and approximate that to 230.09 kilopascals. And that's already answer for part A. Then part B is asking us what is the final temperature of CO2. So we really want T2, right? So V1 is T2, so let's go ahead and do that. V, what is T2? Well, D2, we can do the same thing, PV equals NRT, so now solving for T. So my T2 will be pressure 2, volume 2, divided by the mass, R, and that's it. We have all these information, right? Because we know P1 equals P2, so let's write down here, because P1 equals P2, isobaric process. And then I can sub that in, this is the same thing as P1, V2, mass, R, and we have all this information. 
So 230.09 kilopascals times volume 4. Point, what was it? 6? 1.6, yeah. Meters cubed. And we're dividing that by the mass, which is 7 kilograms. And R, which is 1.089 kilojoules per kilograms. Kelvin. Again, unit wise, kilograms and kilograms. Uh, know that this is Kelvin is going to go up there. And then same thing, right? Kilopascals times meters cubed, that same thing as a kilojoules, so this goes away. And our answer here, our temperature two is going to be given in Kelvin. And this turns out to be 800. Kelvin. So that's our, our answer there. However, there's another way we can do this, right? If you don't want to do it this way, the other thing you can do is you can note that. Let's write it down in green, or black, I guess. The other thing we can do is, well, if P V, if no mass is entering or leaving, then we know that this has to be maintained, right? Because on both sides of the equation, we have this equal to MR. So if that's true, and our pressure is the same, because it's an isobaric process, then this happens, right? And therefore, my T2 is just my V2 divided by my V1 times my T1. And if you guys recall, V2 is exactly double V1. That's what the problem statement says in the beginning. So in other words, this is just 2 times T1. Remember, T1 is 400, so this also renders 800, like we would expect it to. Right? So that's another way you could have solved this if you wanted to. Okay, what's next? What's part C? Part C asks us what is the work during this process? Well, first things first, we know that the volume changes, right? So we go from 2.3 to 4.6. If the volume changes, then we know that there will be work involved in this process. So, okay, we know the definition of work. Let's do this in blue, this is part C. We know that work is the sum of all P dVs as we go from one state to the other. Right? So in this case, it's an isobaric process, so that means that our pressure is constant throughout the whole process, so we can remove it from the integral and allow it to multiply everything. So P, doesn't matter if it's 1 or 2, there's the same. dV, right? So we integrate that and we get just pressure, 1 or 2, doesn't matter, times the difference in volume. Right? So we have the two pressures, we have the two volumes, it's just a matter of plugging down numbers and actually solving this. Okay, so in other words, my work will be 230.09. And that is kilopascals times 4.6 minus 2.3, which obviously is 2.3, right? Because it's 2 V1 minus V1. And this is in meters cubed. Okay, once again, remember that this times this gives us kilojoules. It's the same thing as kilojoules. There's another way we can go about seeing that, which is a pascal is nothing more than a newton times this meter uh, per meter squared. And then multiply that by meters cubed. That gives us newton times a meter, which is the definition of a joule, right? Force times distance because it's kilopascals, kilojoules. And this gives us work equals, we got 529.2, 529.2 kilojoules. And that is our answer for what's the work. Okay, so the, the gas is expanding, right? So therefore it requires 529.2 kilojoules to be able to um, go from state one to state two. We also know, nothing is asking about this, but just for the sake of, art, for, uh, the, sake of uh, the theory, we know that the, Delta U of this gas is also increasing, right? Because we're going from 400 to 800 Kelvin. So therefore, we know that there, there has to be some heat going into the system to allow this process to occur. That's what the first law of thermodynamics tells us. Um, what's the last part of this problem? We need to draw this on a PV diagram. Let's do that. Okay, so part D. Let's go ahead and draw. So I have pressure on the y-axis. Then I have Specific volume or volume doesn't matter, it depends on what you want to do. I think you want the one the one volume. And I'm gonna make sure that all my pressures are in kilopascals and all my volumes are in meters cubed. So we have two states, right? Remember the pressure does not change, it's an isobaric process. So this stays constant and this is 230.09 kilopascals. Now volume does change. The volume starts at 2.3 and then increases to 4.6 meters cubed, right? So that's what we need to to show in this graph. We want to show two states, and they both find themselves at 230. Kilopascals. So we go from zero in black, I guess, here to here. We go like so. This direction. This right here is my state one. So that's one for state one. And this right here is my state two. Right over here and over here. And there you go. We have our PV diagram for this uh, process happening on the CO2 on the carbon dioxide. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know. And make sure to subscribe to the channel to keep updated on the questions that we all release every week.